he's he's always kind of you know walked to the beat of his own drum and um he feels a certain way you know he he loves he loves his family he loves south fork but it, you know and now he's married and uh he's definitely um wanting a little bit more privacy you know we were talking about a family of uh, essentially billionaires that all live under one roof and at the end of the day it's it's an odd concept but it's kind of a ewing thing and it always has been and he doesn't want to change that he just wants a little more space you know uh, he 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 stresses that he's a newlywed and you know everyone's kind of sleeping right there on top of each other like you know uncle bobby's right there and emma's right there and uh, uh, Elena's out. It's just like let, let me get some space and something new. So uh, that, that that's his idea, which I think is is normal. Now, if it's going to happen or not, especially with Bobby, who knows? We'll see if he'll, he'll, he'll let that happen. He obviously had issues with both of, both of his parents, um, and and you know, uh, he loves his mother a lot. I think the the drinking thing was something that really tore him up growing up. He um he just knew that mom drinking's a bad thing, and um. Uh, the fighting between JR and Sue Ellen always, I think, kind of, it pulled the genre on, so left to right, left to right, father to mom, and who do I, who do, whose team am I on, and, and um, so I think he's got a lot of resentment that's, you know, that he covers up, he covers up with kind of bravado and trying to say, you know, I'm, I'm John Ross, I know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in control, and I know exactly what I want with my life, but at the end of the day, you know, every day is a learning process for him and, and a proving process, whether he's trying to prove something to Uncle Bobby or whether he's trying to prove something to JR, Sue Ellen, or, or himself. Um, but, you know, they, they, Sue Ellen and John Ross have come a long way since the pilot of the new Dallas. Um, they didn't have a very good relationship in the beginning. Mm. Uh, and they, they kind of, then she would, she would kind of take his side and they would work together. But then what's really getting at Sue Ellen now is she's seeing a lot of JR and John Ross. A lot of JR traits, whether it's the backstabbing and the scheming, willing to do anything for business and get ahead, or whether it's how he treats his significant other. Um, and it's really taken a toll on her, and it's definitely not helping her when it comes to her process of trying to stay sober. Um, it's it's kind of pushing her back, kind of like you know what JR always did. He kind of drove her to drink, and she hates thinking that John Ross could be anything like. JR. So it's a big struggle, and this year they, uh, you know, it comes to it comes to a comes to a clash. Pretty, pretty. It's a pretty intense. They've got a pretty, really intense moment, mother son moment, and it's gonna it's gonna remind I think a lot of the fans of the original Dallas what happens from it. <laughs> but um, it, again, when 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 he needs to do something, when something gets in his way, just like JR. It's almost that he would stop at nothing, and usually the only thing that he won't cross, you know, is like, uh, well, at the, he and Sue Ellen really have a big problem, and, and I think that at the end of the day, he does love his mother, and he cares for her, and he doesn't want to see her uh, uh, go off the deep end again. He, that, that's, what, that's what he, it's a nightmare, it was a nightmare when he was a kid, and he does not want to see that again, so... Some stuff happens that I think that they both uh, aren't going to be proud of, and um, but the audience is going to love it. This season is very much about people comparing him to his father. Now that Jr. is gone, you know uh, he hears a lot. You're just like your father, or Bobby might say you're half the man your father was. Um, he keeps saying I'm nothing like my father, even though he knows he's very much like Jr. He was taught how to do business one way, and that was from Jr. And, and, and he believes that that's the way to win. Um, so. But at the end of the day, like I said, he he is a um, he he's a guy who acts like he knows what he's doing. He's got everything under control. But really, when he gets when he gets by himself, it's like, okay, now what? How do I get out of this? Uh, you know. And he really does look to look to his father and hope that his father will somehow give him a sign and an answer as to how he gets himself out of this, or what do I do next, or what do I do about this? Uh, he I think he really believes that Jr. left him too soon. Um, as much as he and he and Jr. were going to kind of battle it out season two and. And, and try to try to gain that power and that 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 that, that top seed at Ewing Global or Ewing Energies. Um, you know, Jr. passed away, and uh, he, I don't think he was ready for that. He, as much as he puts on a front, like I know what I'm doing, I'm in control. He really does wish his father was still around. So he's got a lot to learn about himself, um, and he's making a lot of mistakes, uh, and he's seeing how some of these mistakes, how big the consequences can be, uh, and how dangerous it can be. I mean, the Ewings get. They get threatened uh, a bunch this year um, in a big way, and which again, it's great for TV. But in John Ross' world, it's uh, it's a never-ending roller coaster. And so, I think he wants to 
I think he wants to be on top. His main thing is like, I know that my, my the, the only way I can make JR proud is if I can be the biggest company in the world and be sitting at the, you know, the, the, the head chair, the president chair at the biggest company in the world. And um, he's obsessed with that. So that's going to cause a lot of problems, but it's a journey, and it's an exciting journey, I think, especially for the audience. You know, I, I, I remember getting the role and, and kind of studying who JR was as a character and, and what made the world kind of become captivated with him, um, kind of create that love to hate you know, theme. Um, and I understood it pretty quickly, and I, and I never wanted to play like I was trying to be JR. I really wanted to like be like, who would his son be with the with the issues and the struggles that he grew up with, with his father and his mother? Who would his son be? Um, and you know, now it's I, I had an interest. Someone said the other day, you realize you're the last kind of you're the last Ewing, living Ewing that is all about oil. It's Jock and it's JR. Now it's you. You're it. Bobby's about South Fork and preserving the land, and Christopher's about green energy and methane. No one else in my family is about oil, and I believe that that's what we do. That's what made the original show so big. It was about this grand wealth and this Texas oil, and that's all he knows and that's all he cares about. So it's kind of cool to think that I am kind of that last Ewing that's really trying to keep our legacy alive in, 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 in the world of oil. And so, um, and I keep getting a lot of things. You know, I, don't, I never try to mimic Larry at all, but I, people will see these little grins things that I do or these the, the way that I say things, and they say that it really reminds them of JR. So for me as an actor, that, that I mean, that... That, that that makes me you know it makes me happy. It makes me proud that that I'm actually um, kind of reminding people of of the great Jr. You know, and and so again, I, I, John Ross is his own character, but he's done, he's he's kind of you know I always wanted to hit the spawn of Jr. Is what I wanted to be. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be I wanted people because I knew coming into it that the fans. First of all, they're going to be very skeptical of us bringing the show back in general, so we had to do it great. But also, if I was going to take kind of a, a leading role in the show, in, in the steps of one of the, it, in the steps of one of the best villain in TV history, I had to step my game up and really prove myself. And so, Larry and I, the first season and, and half of the second season, we really fed off of each other. And I love some of those scenes, man. I mean, getting to work with him was just an unbelievable experience and, 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 you know, opportunity for me. And, and it, I don't know how long the show's going to go, but I, I'm willing to be here as long as it goes and, uh, and keep growing with the show and, you know, kind of being that, that villain that he was. I think that he thinks that he's so good at what he does that he can, he can, he can get away with it. And he justifies it that he's doing it for the better of the family. Um, he knows that he, he does love Pamela. He doesn't want to screw that up. But he's so caught up in taking this company to the next level and making these big moves and that he puts that kind of behind him, knowing that I'm good enough at this that I won't get caught. And when it, when stuff starts to really, when it's when when you know when it starts to get hot on him, and he's going, he's starting to see that maybe did Sue Ellen see something and does she know something? Um, then he starts to really kind of worry. But I think he thinks he's got this in the bag and. Uh, as we know, that's never the case on Dallas. You're always going to get caught. <laughs>